TCFC. Hello and welcome back to TCFC. My name is Tom. Haven't done a video about Birmingham City for a while, so apologies for that. I've just been really busy. Anyway, I'm delighted to say we are safe. Although it's mathematically possible that Rotherham could still catch us, you know, we're 10 points ahead and they've only got 15 points that they can possibly get. So to be honest, I swear by Burnham's son, we will stay up this year. And that's great because we're going to be in the championship. The summer has arrived. The sun is out. And you know what? That just makes me really happy. It's really a time for contemplation. We can now have a think about next season. But things like which players were good, which players weren't so good. There are some players that we definitely want to keep and there are others that we probably don't want to keep. And that brings me on to the main subject of this video, which is Jonathan Leeko. Now, Jonathan Leeko has come under a tremendous amount of criticism on social media lately, and some of it is probably justified, but a lot of it I think is over the top. I mean, you're getting stuff like Leeko is a disgrace, Leeko is a terrible footballer, Leeko went to my house, killed me, took my skin, put it on, pretended to be me and shag my wife. Literally, it's getting ridiculous on social media about how terrible Leeko is. Let's just remember for a minute that he's only a 21 year old footballer and he's probably trying his best. He does work hard. But moving on, I'm not here to be a Lico apologist and say he's an amazing player. What I am going to do is just plead the case for the defence about why he's not as bad as you all think. Okay, reason one why Lico is not that bad is because he is a fly. He buzzes around the pitch, all over the place, like he's always involved. Now, obviously most of the time he's there losing the ball and stuff, but there are times when flies are useful, particularly in relation to Lukas Jukovic. Because he's there buzzing around bzz, 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 all over the pitch, he's distracting the other defenders. Now, Jukovic needs people to do that for him. It doesn't have to be a second striker like Liko has been playing. It can be attacking midfielders as well, as we did under Pep. But if he's got flies going around him, then it's more likely that he's going to get space for the headers. And he has actually got that space for headers recently, which for the rest of the season, he hasn't been able to do. And part of that is because of Liko's bzz, flying. Reason two, and I'm coming to the end of my list of reasons now, is that he's actually quite capable of winning a penalty or two. Um, so obviously last night against Forrest, um, there were no replays I was watching on the red button on Sky, and for some reason I don't do replays, which is incredibly annoying by the way. Um, but it looked to me like he should have had a penalty. Um, and in the previous game, uh, he did get a penalty. Or was it uh, Swansea? I don't remember. Anyway, um, he can win penalties and he is capable of winning free kicks. Um, if, he pro if he tried to take on the man less times, then he'd probably win more free kicks. Unfortunately, those are the two reasons I can think of, and I can't actually think of any more for poor Jonathan. Um, he is actually quite good on the ball until he loses it. I think his main problem is he, try he takes on a man, he beats him, and then he tries to beat him another six times, and really he should pass it on. However, obviously that's not good enough. And he obviously does have major deficiencies to his game that throughout the season, even with Bowyer, we haven't really seen improve. Obviously, you know, the, the technical side of his game, the shooting, passing, um, football intelligence side of things. So my main point really is, I know he's not that great, but he has contributed and been starting in our fantastic run recently. So why don't all the haters just give him a bit of a break? I mean, is there any need really on Facebook and Twitter and all the other social media thingies to constantly make post after post after post about how terrible Lico is and how you can't understand how he's in the team? What my advice would be is that <clears throat> we're staying up, we're on great form, the sun is out, the pubs are open again. Let's just enjoy life and stop moaning about Lico because to be honest, I just think it's a bit sad. I do think, yeah, he's obviously not that great, but he has contributed, not with any goals or assists, but in a more in a more subtle way. Anyway, like I say, everyone's entitled to their opinion, but I just think, you know, I've said it before, why don't we just try and keep it nice on social media? There's no need to constantly run down our players. There's, there's criticism and there's constructive criticism. Rant over. Up the blues, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.